Hey everyone, welcome back to our channel. In today's video, we're going to dive into the NHV boot once again and explore how we can convert our MBR disk to GPT and switch our boot settings from legacy BIOS to UEFI. Now, you might be wondering why we want to make this conversion. Well, here's the deal. If you're still using an older computer with BIOS, then you're stuck with MBR. But if you're rocking a newer system with UEFI, which is an upgraded version of BIOS, then GBT is the way to go. It's a modern and robust standard used in most new computers nowadays. GBT offers some advanced features that MBR lacks, and it's more resilient to boot problems and data corruption. So let's jump right in and see how we can make this conversion happen. All right, step one, plug in the NHV boot USB into your computer and power it up. Make sure to select the NHV boot USB as the boot device. Once you're in, fire up the mini tool partition wizard. On the screen, you'll see our MBR disk, which we'll be working on. It's called disk one, and it has three partitions. The 50 megabytes MBR system reserved active partition, our Windows system drive, and a 500 megabytes recovery partition. So let's right click on it and choose the magical option. Convert MBR disk to GBT disk. A warning message pops up. It's telling us that in order to boot from the GBT disk, we need to enable UEFI boot mode in the BIOS after applying the chain. Consider it a heads up to avoid any troubles down the line. And here's another heads up. If you're rocking a 32-bit Windows, it might not play nicely with the GBT disk. But it's okay. We've got a 64-bit Windows OS on the disk, so we're good to proceed. I answer yes, and watch as the program works its magic. Look at that. Our partition wizard is creating a brand new 200 megabytes FAT32 active partition which is our modern EFI system reserve partition. With everything set, I click apply to kick off the process. And just like that, disk one has transformed into a full-fledged GBT disk. Pretty awesome, right? But wait, we're not done yet. Our next mission takes us to the BIOS, where we'll make some important changes. So stay tuned and let's head over to those BIOS settings. Step two, on my computer, I simply press the delete button when I turn it on to access the BIOS. In the BIOS, I'm going to make an important change by switching it to the UEFI mode in the secure boot setting. But here's the tricky part that many people stumble on. If you mistakenly select the boot manager from disk 1 instead of the UEFI OS as the first boot option, your computer might boot into the startup repair environment. Don't panic if that happens. It's just your computer detecting a startup problem. To fix it, all you need to do is go back to the BIOS and select the UEFI OS as the first boot option. Simple as that. With the previous two steps completed, you can now successfully boot into Windows. Once you're locked in, there are a few things to take care of. First, we have our new EFI system reserve partition. Second, we have the old system reserve partition that we no longer need. You can safely delete it from the menu. Lastly, we have a partition hosting our Windows repair environment. We won't touch that one for now. Let's head back to our mini tool partition wizard and take a closer look at our new EFI system reserve partition. If we navigate to EFI, Microsoft, and the boot folder, we'll find two important files. The BCD 
and the new Windows Boot Manager. These are the important files behind our boot process. Now, if you haven't deleted the old MBR system reserve partition yet, here's how to do it. Simply right click on it and select delete. This action will free up some space on the disk one. You can leave it as it is, or if you prefer, you can merge it with the Windows system drive. It's totally up to you. Once you've made your decision, just click on apply to proceed. If you want, you can verify that the Windows OS is on UEFI by simply going to the system information. Below on this line, it confirms that the boot mode is UEFI. And that's basically the whole process of converting an MBR disk to a GBT disk. If you found this video helpful, we would really appreciate your support. Please simply click that subscribe button to stay updated with our latest videos. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you in the next video.